What's up, everybody? Tony Minito here. Just wanted to do a quick Halloween tutorial on Vampire Fangs, uh, designed in ExoCAD. A uh, couple of small things that I'll point out as we go through this regarding uh, things like cement gap and um, what, we, what I call margin ramp. That's basically how far from your finish line the cement gap begins. So getting started, we're just importing our scans. I did this on myself. And as I'm marking a margin, I'm doing it kind of like a crown, and I'm trying to tuck those finish lines into the embrasures a little bit. What I found is that will give you actually a little bit of suction that will allow these to stay on pretty easily. Obviously, these are not going to be permanently cemented. We don't want to keep these on for very long. So if we can get a little inherent retention to them, we can put them on with like a temp bond clear or something just to wear them on Halloween, then we can take them off and uh, do whatever we want with them. So marking those margins, it's a good idea just to tuck it into the embrasure a little bit, just to get some retention. Going through and doing our path of insertion, trying to minimize any undercuts. Um, and then going through and tweaking, like I said, that cement gap. So you want that margin ramp to be very, very small. So. I think it usually is like a is like a half a millimeter or a millimeter. I will take it down all the way to 0 0.01. So very, very small. I don't want a lot of this restoration touching the tooth. Just at the finish line. Very, very small amount at the finish line. And then as you see, we're going in. You can use whatever tooth library you want. I just use the default for me, which is HD. Uh, and basically, we're going to go in and just do a really simple elongated canine design. I'm going to do very, very little to this. You can see from an occlusal standpoint, you're going to have issues if you're wrapping it around, in most cases, to the lingual. That's okay. You can tweak that a little bit once you get it out of your printer. And once again, most of this stuff, I'm just trying to make them a little pointier. Most of this stuff is actually easier to do uh, with a with a burr in your hand when you're taking off the, the support nubs. Um, so this is a real quick design, just quick and dirty, um, trying to get something that you think looks pretty good. And once again, don't get too hung up on the occlusion. You're not going to be eating in these in all likelihood. Uh, if, if you do want to eat them, maybe you could keep them as veneers uh, and just keep them all along that facial surface. So I am now done with my design. I'm going to move into my RP software. Once again, printing these on uh, an, an Einstein with uh, Flexera, Smile Ultra Plus. And what I'm going to do first is import them, and I'm going to make my supports just setting one of the presets that's available for me. As I look at this, I like to do really small supports, so 0.55 or 0.6. And I will add a fairly decent density of supports to a print like this. What I found is um, these prints will be successful all the time if I have a good density of supports. And I try to keep them off of the facial surface if at all possible, uh, which is one of the nice things about wrapping this design over to the lingual is that we can really condense the supports in those areas. The software was doing something weird where it was actually removing some of the supports that I was placing. So what I discovered is that if you go into advanced settings, there is a feature called clearance from part. And that default is at 1.2. And you can take that all the way down to 0.1. Here I took it to 0.2 and then was able to add that uh, additional density of contact points back to my build. And once again, I'm just trying to make sure that this will be a successful build. Most of the reasons why people are might struggle if they're new to printing is they're not adequately supporting that print. So you just got to make sure you have enough support points. 0.6 uh, tip thickness is so small, as I'll show you later, these supports will peel right off with your fingers. So you don't need a, a burr or anything to remove those. You can hold the shift key. Uh, to move those supports uh, if they're on, but you just want to tweak the location of them a little bit. Once again, this is my own personal preference for adding supports. Uh, you may find something else works better for you. All right, we got uh, this supported. So and then I'm going to duplicate this because I want to I want to print four. Oh, you can see we have a funky support there. So I'm going to get rid of that. Yeah, I don't want a support point there. 
So I'll select both of these uh, fangs and I will duplicate them and I'll print uh, a total of four. So what this will do is just allow me to stain and glaze one and just hand polish the other and then I can pick whichever set I like the best. So this is about a 18 minute print on the Einstein. Uh, once it's done, we are going to put it in our alcohol bath, get everything nice and clean. And then we will just remove the supports, finger pressure. Like I said, these things peel right off, even with something very um, thin and fragile like a veneer. So really, really simple to do. And then I like this bird. It's just a little uh, kind of a mushroom, a medium grit mushroom to remove those support points that are remaining. We'll put it in our auto flash to cure. Do a little staining and glazing on one set. Here I am using GC's OptiGlaze. And then once that is ready, back in the auto flash for 3000 flashes. And this is what we get. All right, so I hope you all have a great Halloween. Uh, feel free to reach out on Instagram at smileprofessor with any questions. Thanks.